Now, David, after everything that our characters have been through, would you yourself actually want to be part of the Umbrella Academy? You know, that sounds really stressful, to be honest with you. Uh, I feel like that comes with a lot of responsibility. And you know what? Yeah, yeah, I'm down. Only if you're in the game. You know, I feel like with our outside perspective, knowing uh, all of these people as characters and their context, I feel like we could work some family issues out. I think so too. I would say the most shocking uh, moment from season two was the entirety of shooting 210 because we had the weather change on us like that. We were in a Canadian summer which was very hot and humid and we're supposed to be in Dallas. Then all of a sudden winter hits and the entire set is covered in snow and we have this huge exterior action packed sequence. And so uh, we had to cleverly, well, I say we, really it was the brilliance of the writers that allowed us to continue and weave our way around it and make it part of Harlan's powers that uh, this uncontrollable force that Vanya has sort of infected him with is now this swirling weather distortion uh, tornado that he can't control. There was one day where we had to do a completely different scene because an exterior shot was just scrapped. And so me and Tom had to uh, memorize an entirely different scene and then go shoot it like 30 minutes later. And David, what about you? Oh, well, you know, Great question. I Thank think you. the shocking part of season two was Ben was alive. You know, that was that was a big shock for me, uh, especially because I had said my good riddance to Justin. I said, good, Justin, you're not coming back. You're done after episode nine. And Justin said, great, David. And then two weeks later, he's hopping and skipping through the trailers and saying, have you read 210? Have you read the last five pages? And then I said, I'm so sorry, Justin. I'm so sorry. Did you get any hints? Did you have any ideas? What do you think was the destination that the siblings were going to at the end of 210? Where do you think we were going to time travel to? Well, I mean, as Diego, I I, I had little faith in Five. Uh, he had little faith in Five that they would actually end up being at home at the right place. And I think that's why uh, you notice Diego's reaction as he walks into the house, he's like, something's off. Because something's off, you know? And I think he's the first one, that's why he's the first one to spot Ben on the mantelpiece. But as as uh, as David, I, I obviously I knew, because Steve had told me, Aiden, what about you? I think Five had very little faith in Five's ability to time travel. <laughs> that's why he only resorted to it uh, when we had this giant wave of destruction hurling towards us. He was like, okay, time for a Hail Mary of a move. Let's see where in the past we can jump to. And he ended up scattering his siblings across time in the 60s. So yeah, Five had very little self-confidence in that little segment of his abilities. Aiden, I, yes. I hate to be controversial with you right now. Oh, but let's do it. Fine, I think time's needed. So I wanna ask, what do you think the significance of Lila's presence in the second season is? Does it raise the question of a bigger picture for the siblings? I would say that it's certainly an expansion on the Umbrella Academy. We seem like a very closed family. I mean, the Academy itself is a great metaphor for that. It's this closed down interior space that most of our lives take place in, but to the outside world, it's just every day. They don't realize that we're trying to stop this apocalypse. So it's a very self-contained story. And Lila represents this other side of possibility of these other uh, members of what might've been the Umbrella Academy. She's one of the 43 uh, superheroes that were born that day. So she sort of holds a metaphorical significance. But also, and you can speak to this, on Diego's point of view, uh, I think the siblings are constantly traveling from place to place and doing thing to thing, and they're looking for just anything to hold on to to keep their psyche together. And I can only imagine what Lila means to Diego in that respect. A 
a family. It's uh, something of him uh, having some kind of redemption, possibly of being a father. Yeah. And maybe raising his kids in a different way that Hargreaves raised his own. Ooh, that's a good point. We would probably all rebel against the way that Hargreaves treated us in our own parenting. I can only imagine, Mike, as Diego, the kids that Diego has and how he would have six bonker aunts and uncles. You know, that would be one of the funniest things to watch. I would I'd love to see Luther try to teach my kid how to hit a baseball. Yes, that would be a very fun scene. Do you think that children of the Umbrella Academy will inherit any abilities? I believe so, yes. Maybe half an ability, you know? Like if you can time travel, maybe you could just time travel to the fridge. David, how do you think Diego will explain his powers to his kids? How do you think he's gonna approach that? I think you look at the kid and said, kid, you wanna see a magic trick? And the kid will be like, what is it, daddy? And you're like, well, give me a beer. A nice trick. Aiden, do you yes. think that people will, will do you less of an after season two? Or are they gonna see you differently? And you can answer that for Diego also. And be raw. I need you to be real. I will be raw. I will be extremely raw. Whatever that means, however you define it. Uh, yeah, I think all of us have some evolution uh, one way or another. We definitely, you know, just get to know each other as siblings a lot more. For five, the siblings bring out a lot more humanity in him. He's been moving from place to place since the time he was 13. And most of the places he's been to have been traumatic for him. So he's never had time to stop and figure out who he is, what he wants to do, what his actual place in life is. And so he's very plot driven. He's very event driven and subtle scenes that he gets with the siblings really bring out that unexplored territory with five. So yeah, I think people will see him differently as each of us bring out different sides of each other's characters. Yeah, how do you think, how do you think viewers will see uh, Diego differently in season two? I think, Aiden, I, I, I think they're gonna be, they're gonna forgive him, you know? For all the things that he was in season one and how mean he was, they're gonna see him and they say, hey, I understand you, you little gummy bear. There is a sweetness to each of our characters that we uh, do our best to hide. Uh, like we're all we're all hiding behind this persona because there's a little you know sibling competition, yeah. but I think each of our characters have really good hearts and uh, we certainly have good intent. Yeah, you're like we're sweethearts you're like underneath a, all of the facade. You're like a ninety percent dark chocolate with a cherry inside. You know, you don't really like mm -hmm. the dark chocolate. It's a little not too sweet unless it's like seventy. But if it's ninety. You better have a cherry inside, and I think that's what five is, you know? That's David, I'm all for that metaphor. Yeah, me too. Five sounds delicious. Now, David, season two takes place in the 1960s, but what do you think the main themes are from the series that might relate to main themes of the present day? Well, Aiden, I think if it's told right, it connects with everyone. And I think that we, as, as um, collaborators, we took a, a very honest approach, I believe, in, in telling uh, about these kids with child trauma that are having to deal with race issues, they're having to deal with LGBTQ issues, or they're having to deal with uh, uh, nuclear war issues that obviously are, you know, you're seeing it today and, 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 and it's kind of putting you in a place of Things haven't really changed, you know, and uh, it's a, it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's not a, not a good thing, I'd say. But also, you know, our show, it, it, it don't matter, you know, yeah. it don't matter because I, I think we talked about this yesterday about this is just to forget about what's going on in their lives for a little bit. That's all. It's escapism. Yeah.
TV. Yeah, I agree. But, you know, with a show as diverse as we are, I mean, the siblings are from all corners of the world. And the subject matter of the show uh, has many different shades and colors. So we have a lot of room to explore. So in that way, I feel we have an obligation to acknowledge certain themes that are uh, present in the modern day and make sure that we give them attention and we give them the correct context and viewpoint that they deserve. So we have a major audience. This show gets watched by tons of people. We're very lucky in that regard. So we have a responsibility to make sure that we promote certain messages.